Okay, we are live on the air. Hello, everybody. Steve Rakin here with the Rakin Profit YouTube channel. Coming back to you guys with another live show. And right now it's about 2 o'clock Eastern time in Connecticut. And for the last, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes, I've been doing some research on eBay. I typically do this every Sunday, if not more than once a week. Just going through random categories, whether it's clothing, electronics, books, all types of different uh, categories. Who knows how far I'll go down into the rabbit hole. Studying and researching items that have sold on eBay. So I've been doing this for about a half hour and I chose a couple items, 13 items to be specific that stood out that I thought were unique, interesting in a sense, uh, that might be able to help you to learn to uh, maybe be on the lookout for these items when you're out and about. So here we are guys, live show, top 13 top selling items that sold on eBay for ridiculous profit. So before we get into the show, I want to ask you guys right now to smash that like button, guys. I really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, be sure to get my free book that I've created alongside with the green room down in the description below as well. 100 amazing items to resell. So these are items you could find from thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, pawn shops, and beyond to sell on platforms such as eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, and more. So get that, smash the like button. Let's do a quick sound check and shout some people out right now. So bear with me for one moment. What's going on, Ed Sandoval? Good to see you, Ed. Timothy Grapp. Whoa, dude, this is football time. What you doing? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll be hurting some people's feelings with that. But good to see you, Tim. How you been, man? Dash Sweezy. Good to see you. I'm certainly on a roll. Having a lot of fun. Definitely having a lot of fun, and I highly recommend to anybody out there who you know, is running a business, whether it's eBay or Amazon, start making some YouTube videos because you meet some amazing people, and it gives leverage uh, to yourself. It puts leverage on yourself to study and research, which is what this video is doing for me. Rimco's Hangle Sport Vlog. Hello from Amsterdam. What's going on? Good to see you. Amsterdam in the house. I'm going to call you DV. I have been learning from you for the last six months. Please keep it up. I won't stop. All right. Josh Middleton says, came across a bunch of expired ink. Should I get it or pass? I sell expired ink on eBay all the time, and it goes for killer money. I think I sold some expired ink, was it a month ago? I don't know if it was expired. I don't remember. But I know I sold um, – uh, I've sold a couple things of uh, expired ink in the past that went for really, really good money. So even if it's three or four years old, killer profits on eBay. Now, you're not going to be able to sell that on Amazon if it's expired, but put it on eBay. Trust me, uh, even if it's opened up and stuff, if it's new but the packaging is all opened, that'll still go for really good money as well. Susanna, good to see you. Sergio, Philip, my fairy treasures. Hi from Vegas. What's going on? Hey from Worcester, Mass. Axel Rosa. I've been I've been I've been sourcing out in Worcester, Mass. Some good good thrift stores over there. There's that one Savers. I think it's Worcester. I don't know if it's Worcester, but it's alongside the highway. That might might be somewhere else. Anyways, let's dive into the show, guys. I'm gonna share with you guys 13 top selling items on eBay. These are 13 items that I found on eBay that have sold. Now these aren't mine. I didn't sell these items. Actually, to be honest with you, a lot of these items I don't know much about, but this is why I'm doing the show to bring forth these items that I'm learning about to maybe help you as well. So here we have an item that, actually this isn't even the first one, I'm sorry. This is gonna be coming up at the end, but let me see, hold on, let's see. We'll skip to that first. Uh, this is an item that sold for $796. This is a vintage helmet. Um, and I'm going to just read the title because I don't have much experience with, with helmets. I've sold a few in the past. My good friend and business partner, the Bonafide Hustler, he's really good with these items. Uh, but I always look into these. When I find a helmet or anything vintage looking or old or just unique, I look it up. So I pull out my phone, I go to eBay, I find the brand, and I try to find a similar one that sold. So I'm going to just read the title. Vintage Helmet Maroon, Red Author, Fulmer Golden Wings AF20. So that's what it says. Take a look at this item right here. Take a look at some of the pictures. <clears throat> Now, you want to be looking at the little details, right? So to check this out. What does it say? FLA safety production. So it looks like that's a size right there. It's very important to always know what the size is. Looks like it's some type of design. So here we go. Size large. 
Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else in here, like a model number. There's the tag. You know, a lot of people have trouble trying to figure out what the brand is. Look for the tag. Uh, just look all over the item. There you see. So there's the brand right there, Author Fulmer. So I don't know much about this brand. And typically what I'll do when, I, when I'm going through the sold listings, when I find something that sells for like a ridiculous profit like this item, I'll write the brand down. So what I do is I write this down on a piece of paper, Author Fulmer, and then I would go back into the uh, sold listings. I'll show you exactly what I do. Just like that. Copy that. I'd go here, I would type in helmet, and then simply what I would do is I would hit sold, and just get a feel for, you know, what the price ranges are for, you know, this particular item, because one thing you need to realize is, all because one item sells for $796 doesn't mean the next one's going to sell for that. There's so many different factors that come into play from size, age, material, condition, design. I mean, there's a million different factors. There's seasonality factors. There's, you know, the fact that maybe there's not a, not a bunch of them listed, right? And maybe that one person comes through at the right time and, and is willing to spend that much money. Uh, obviously, this is a different case because there was 21 bids. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the other ones that have sold. So you see this version right here, the AF25 only sold for $19.95, yet the AF20 Golden Wings sold for $7.96. So that's pretty crazy, and that's a big difference. So just take a look. But uh, yeah, I thought that was a cool item. Remember that brand right there. Okay, next item that I found when I was doing a little research on eBay for sold items is this 50 disc CD DVD duplicator slash labeler. So title says Microboards G3 Disc Publisher. Uh, based on the sold listings, looks like there were four bids auction style. This ended up uh, selling for $319 and uh, shipping was $25. let us take a look at what they used to ship. So they, they went straight up priority mail, priority mail. Um, and they probably just put the the, the, the weight in, so it came up with an accurate estimated uh, cost to charge the customer. But anyways, this is a CD DVD duplicator, so very interesting item right here. And you guys would be surprised if you're if you're a thrifter and you go to Salvation Armies or Savers or um, Goodwills, when you go to the electronics department, always look at the bottom row. It's typically a lot of boxes. You're going to find bigger items, including. Um, sometimes like typewriters, sometimes you'll find printers, fax machines, scanners, stuff like that. Every now and then you will find a uh, jackpot item. And I forget what the exact item was, but I remember when I was in California. I was in San Jose, California with uh, my buddy Yong. And we were uh, going through the electronics aisle. And I was looking at the top row, the middle row, typically where most of the items are stored. And he came out of nowhere, my buddy Young, and found this item all the way at the bottom hidden behind another box. And it was some type of scanner. I think it was one of those scanners that you scan in your receipts. I forget what it's called. Um, but the thing was going for like three or $400 with like an 11 rank in electronics, which was crazy. So, you know, you may think to yourself right now, Steve, this is great. This item sold for 319, but will I ever find it? Who knows? Probably most of you will never find it, but the, the chances are of it happening. Um, you know, it's possible. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So you just got to look, keep an eye at the bottom row, but a uh, pretty cool item right here. Let's take a look at the pictures. Microboards technology G3. I mean, all you got to do is find this item once or recognize it, right? Half the battle, I say this so many times because I'm literally saying it to myself, half the battle is just recognizing an item, knowing that it has value. I mean, I can't tell you how many people would just pass this up thinking like, ah, it's just some, you know, random electronic. No, no, no. Next up, speaking of electronics and uh, different uh, scanning types of tools, this is a Fargo HDP 820 color high definition thermal ID card printing system. So thermal ID card printing system. I don't know much about this, but I was doing research and these uh, thermal ID card printing systems go for a crap load of money. Uh, they bring in some really good cash. I don't exactly know what it is. Let's see if we could do some research together. Um, but yeah, I mean, anything that's selling for this much money, I want to know about it. I want to know what is going on here. So <laughs> description, working as intended. Thank you for the um, thorough description. Appreciate that. 
drinking a little bit of coconut water right here by 365 everyday value not from concentrate delicious anyways let's see yeah i don't i don't know much about this item right here if anybody knows what a thermal id card printing system is let me know obviously it's printing out some type of card i don't know if it's someone who would make fake licenses or something i don't know i have no clue but um simply this is what i would do if you want to learn more about these items this is exactly how i would do it i would copy that i would paste it in and i would go to sold listings i would probably even go under used and i would just do some research that way so you see fargo is a big brand right here fargo fargo it looks like fargo is pretty much the only brand that's popping up i wish i knew more about this item uh but you know the big thing to get out of this is if you find any big bulky electronic item and it says fargo and it looks like something like this just remember it and look it up and do your research now it's always a challenge determining if the item actually works and i know some thrift stores will give you a return policy on electronics i believe i want to say goodwill is I don't know if it's 48 hours or 72 hours, uh, but you know, if it looks interesting and you don't have time or the abilities to test it out at the thrift store, buy it, make sure their return policy allows you to return it and uh, test it out thoroughly. That's key with electronics. Test, test, test. Let's see what people are saying in the comments section real quick. So we got 52 people watching live right now. So want to thank each and every one of you for watching live. I hope I didn't take anyone away from their football games, but you want to know what? We're here learning. This is going to make us money. This is going to grow our business. You know, a football game is awesome. I, I love watching football as well, but it ain't growing your business and it ain't making you money. So if one of your goals is to grow your business, to make money, the foundation of that is going to be your education. So um, definitely appreciate you guys being here right now. Jim says, um, looks like it's his wife. Okay, my husband is a videographer who bought his duplicator used on eBay. Max says, found at a yard sale yesterday, woman's Burberry coat, long base, 30 bucks, going for 150 to 200 Yeah, Burberry is a great brand right there. I find it quite often at garage sales. How much How much make off just books only? So I'm not sure if he's asking me how much money I make from books. I do at least a couple thousand dollars on selling books on Amazon each and every month. If you're wondering where to sell your books, I would definitely put them on Amazon. Okay, cool. So let's keep moving, guys. Again, if you're watching live right now, do me a big favor. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. Say hello. Let me know where you are from in the world. And uh, if you got any questions, I'll jump in and answer them for you as well. Barbara G. Hey, Steve. Love your videos. Hugs from Oregon. Thank you so much. Max, what scanner are you using to scan books? I'm using the Amazon Seller app and FBA scan with the with the um, Opticon 2002 scanner. Okay, so we got done with that. Now, here's an item that sold for $399. $399. Vintage concert shirts. Now, I have very little experience with concert shirts, con concert shirts but I know uh, there's plenty of people out there who absolutely destroy it and know exactly what to look for. To be honest with you, I don't have... A lot of knowledge when it comes to musicians and you know vintage bands, uh, concerts, uh, vintage T-shirts, and like what bands like in the '70s and '80s were most popular. I don't know much about it, um, but if anyone here knows, you know about a lot about music, musicians, bands, you know '70s, '80s, '90s music. Um, you're big into concerts. You can make really good money selling uh, concert shirts. Now, again, I don't have the experience to back it up, but I have seen these shirts sell on eBay time and time again, and people are making hand over fist on certain items. But again, you're going to need to figure out what is actually in demand, what is rare, uh, and what sells. But uh, I mean, check this out right here. This is a, uh, oh man, this, this shirt looks all dirty. It looks like it's stained up. Uh, but $399, this is obviously going to a diehard Nirvana fan, someone who is just like, you know what, I've got to have it. I've got to have it. So, uh, you know, I like how they uh, included the measurement across the chest, but it's crazy, guys. Some of these vintage t-shirts go for freaking ridiculous money. 
let's see what is going on in the description. All right, vintage 1992. When is vintage? When, when is an item considered vintage? Isn't that? It's got to be over 20 years, I believe. I believe. I don't know. I might be wrong. 15 or 20 or 25. Somebody let me know. But officially licensed, tag removed, fits about a large, see all measurements, giant brand shirt, 100% cotton, faded, buttery soft. I love the description right there. Buttery soft. few tiny holes, pant stains, looks amazing. So that's that's pretty ridiculous right here. Uh, speaking of ridiculous items that sold, I'm, I mean, check this item right here. Um, this is a Reebok U.S. Olympic team, Barcelona. Uh, track jacket right here. Check this thing out. This thing is phenomenal. I'm telling you right now, um, if I was to find this thing in a thrift store, I might have a heart attack and die. I'm not kidding because I mean, this is such a rare, hard to come across item right here. Uh, Jordan Reebok Barcelona Olympic gold medal, vintage original jacket starter. So I just read the title for you. Uh, starter jacket, Olympic team, Barcelona, USA, amazing design you got the star you got the usa you get the red right and the red white and blue i mean phenomenal item 450 dollars this item sold for on ebay i mean check this out wow look at this guy holy mackerel so this is what the now i don't know if this was worn by somebody in the olympics or if they sold them let me see what the description is saying <laughs> super super rare jacket they don't come along too often for sale. Once is gone. Once is gone is gone forever. The only one on eBay. Must have Jack to have for Jordan fans. Jordan Reebok Barcelona Olympic gold medal ceremony vintage original jacket. You've seen the rest and now you've seen the best. This guy's like getting poetic. He is getting poetic in this description. I, I you know what? I probably would as well. But check it out, guys. The, Jordan, there's Pippin, uh, Larry Bird. Uh, I don't know who this guy is, but phenomenal item right here. I like when um, certain sellers do that. Like they'll find a super rare item and to prove that they actually have it in their possession, they'll put their actual um, eBay ID, some type of indicator that you know they actually have it. Uh, kind of like when you watch those movies and uh, someone gets like kidnapped, they always have like the newspaper in front of them to prove that they actually kidnapped them. Well, having something like this is to prove that you've actually uh, you're in possession of the item. So uh, I think that's a cool idea right here. Awesome item that sold. I want to see what you folks are saying about that item in the uh, description. All right. I'm going to answer some more questions. I just want to see if there's any commentary. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any commentary about that. I'm, I'm the only one excited. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, uh, DeVesto says, like button has been smashed. Let's get money. Let's get money. Hey, Spring Cruise. Good to see you. Malaya Hunter, what's going on? Michael uh, Robertson, what's up? Uh, someone's asking what app are you using to scan books? I think I already answered that. The Amazon Seller app and FBA Scan. Uh, let's see. So someone was talking about the uh, those uh, uh, those uh, what, what was that thing that we we looked at before those uh, machines that print out the cards. It looks like somebody said those are for uh, employee IDs. So that's pretty cool. Hello from Mexico. We got Mexico in the house. Hola Mexico. Let's see. Would you recommend buying a ton of books? wholesale and then sell them on Amazon via FBA. Uh, yeah, you know, if the, if if there's money to be made, I would definitely do it. You know, the thing is with books, you know, you've got to scan, you know, 50, 100, 200 books, at least when I'm at the thrift store or, you know, church sales or garage sales. Um, you got to scan a bunch of books to find, you know, the ones that are actually worth money. Most books aren't worth money. Most books are what we consider quote unquote penny books. These are books that sell for a penny plus shipping. Um, so, I mean, if you're thinking about buying lots off of eBay or liquidators or um, buying Gaylords from companies, uh, which is like a, a Gaylord is like a huge amount of books. I don't know the exact weight or the amount. Um, you know, you just got to make sure that there's value in the books because, again, you can buy 500 pounds of books and be lucky to make $500. It's just the way it works. So, um, you know, scan, 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 
The best way to determine if a book's worth money is to scan it and, and, and have the app, the Amazon seller app or FBA scan or whatever you're using, Profit Bandit, to do the analyzing for you. Please, next time, tell us a bit about barcodes and if we can create new ones or just use the ones that every item has. Can I use a free barcode creator? I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. I mean, if you're selling on, on Amazon, you're just going to scan the barcodes and then ship it in. You're just using the barcodes as information to link up with your Amazon. But I'm not sure exactly what you mean right there. All right. So we're going to start to get in some really cool things. Speaking of books, I, I like to go through books and just see what's selling for really good money just for fun. And uh, I found this item that actually sold on eBay. Now, again, I tell you to mostly sell books on Amazon, but there's times where I'll sell a book on eBay. I actually sold one recently for um, 75 bucks. And to make a long story short, my mom actually found it and gave it to me. The stupidest, stupidest, dumbest looking book. Like it looked like it had zero value. Sold it for 75 on eBay. Forgot what it was called, but it was some rare book. Um, here's a book by Stephen King, uh, Christine, 1983 first edition. Now I don't have a ton of knowledge when it comes to valuing books based on you know it being a first edition or you know how valuable a book will be if it was signed by the author. I don't really know much about that to be honest. I'm pretty spoiled. And I rely quite heavily on just using the Amazon app to scan or to look up the sold listings. Uh, but this is cool. Stephen King signed uh, Christine 399 bucks. So I just want to share with that with you because it just was pretty cool. Uh, speaking of other types of media items, uh, check this out. This is a VHS, a VHS, and uh, title is Deadpool. $310. Now, this is brand new in the stretch wrap, as you can see, but do some research on this. Um, Deadpool VHS. I want to see if it's still going for good money used. I didn't, I didn't research that. Let's see. I mean, look, best offer under $9.99, best offer under four, four, uh, $5.49. Um, so this is signed for $4.99. I don't know, but uh, that was it was it was pretty crazy. I couldn't believe it. I've never seen a VHS sell for that much, but this was brand new. Keep your eye out for this uh, VHS right here, Deadpool. Kind of looks like a uh, Spider-Man on front uh, from a from a distance, but uh, Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool signed. Now again, I'm not sure if it if it went for that much because it was signed. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. I'm going to, to actually take a look on Amazon real quick on my phone. I want to see if um, I want to see what this item is selling for on Amazon. So let's see, sell a product, Deadpool VHS. So I want to see what this is going for on Amazon. Okay. So it looks like they have some some newer versions. All right, I can't find the listing. But anyways, if any of you guys have time, let me know what this item is going for or used. Uh, this was a really cool item. So we all know this brand. The brand is Pendleton. If you have any experience selling clothing or if you're a fan of vintage clothing or just vintage items in general, uh, Pendleton's an awesome brand. Uh, Pendleton blankets do well. Pendleton scarves, hats, uh, shirts. This is cool. This is a Pendle Pendleton. Uh, I'm going to just read the title. Rare. Pendleton Mr. Smith Rocking Horse 2011 Vintage Wool. So I don't know if they just they had the wooden horse and then they put the, the blanket around it or what happened here. I'm not sure what's going on. But this is a rocking horse. 400 bucks Pendleton. You can tell it's Pendleton just by the design. But how cool is that? That's the coolest how that's no that's the coolest horse in the stable. Mr. Ed ain't got nothing on this horse. All right, next item that sold. I don't know much about this item, but I was just looking through. Sometimes what I'll do is like I was sitting in my room when I was doing the uh, the research, and uh, some sometimes I'll just sit in my room and I'll look around at different things and just type it into eBay and hit sold and then sort from like the highest. And I'm looking around my room and I see a microphone, I see printers. That's how I got the idea of. Um, looking up some of those electronics and I saw some scissors sitting on my table. So I said, you know what? 
I'm going to type in scissors and hit sold listings and sort from the highest to the lowest. And uh, this is one of the items that I that I saw come up in the sold listings. Uh, Mint Hikara high quality thinning scissors, trendy 7415.34 inches. Uh, looks like these are retailing at $835 or more. So I don't know much about this item. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Okay, real quick, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to just type in scissors and I want to see if, you know, if it was just one of those items that sold or if all these things are going for crazy money. We're also going to look into indicating how, how to, how to determine what the brand is on this. We're going to take a look closer, but check out these scissors guys, 299, 200, 199, 179, 499, 295, bada bing, bada boom. The profits are coming soon. So, um, Let's take a look at there was let's take a look at this listing. How do we know that it's a Hikari brand? Let's take a look if there's anything on this scissor. Uh, so I see something. I can't really read it too well. I see something right there next to that. I think I think it says it right on there. So um, I don't know why these are going for so much money, but if you ever come across these items, pick them up. Pokemon! Gotta catch them all. Sorry about that. Pokemon. I remember when I was a little boy, I was huge in a Pokemon. I remember begging my mom. My brother and I, we, I think it was every Sunday, we would go to Toys R Us. Believe it or not, Toys R Us in uh, a street, a, a town over from where I lived. And we would go to this Toys R Us every, I think it was Saturday morning. Saturday or Sunday morning. And we'd go to this Toys R Us. And we're right, right when we walked in to the left-hand side, there was like 500 square feet, maybe more, probably like a thousand square feet or more blocked off. And all the kids would gather with their, with their Pokemon cards and we would have Pokemon battles, right? So we would have Pokemon battles. We would trade cards. We would show off. And I remember going to these little Pokemon get togethers when I was a little boy with my brother. He's two years younger than me. And we would, like I said, we'd play around with Pokemon cards. And I remember begging my mother all the time, like, buy me another pack, buy me another pack. And this is what the packs used to look like. I believe it was like five bucks a pack. And, you know, my mother, she never really made a ton of money. She's a hairdresser. And I remember she, she was always like, oh, you know, I don't have the money. But we used to beg and beg and beg and we used to get them. This is what they look like, and check this out. This is a first edition set, so I'm not sure how it worked. If you know, you know, one out of every maybe thousand packs were a first edition. For any of you uh, Pokemon collectors out there, let me know. But um, this is a pack, an unopened pack. It has to be from the from the 90s when these things started coming out. Uh, unopened pack, <coughs> first edition. Look how much it's going for. Three hundred fifty-five dollars. $355. Now this is Charizard on the front. This is like the ultimate Pokemon card that you could pick up. If you find, if you ever find a hologram original Pokemon card, first edition, mint condition, get that thing put in a case, send it off. I don't know how it all works, but those cards go for big, big bucks. Now uh, it's crazy. 355 bucks. How many of us, when we were kids, you know, opened up a pack just like it was nothing. You know, if we would have only known, right? Imagine if we would have, you know, probably when you, when these things first came out 15 years ago or so, um, you probably could have got them for like 20, 30, 40 bucks a pack. Who knows? I don't know. But I mean, look at the investment, how much it's gone up in value. I don't see any, uh, I don't see many stocks or, uh, besides maybe the Amazon stock, uh, but I don't see many investments that could, you know, 10 X your money in 15 years. So that was pretty cool. Here is a set of ballpoint pens, ballpoint pen and pencil set. I uh, thought of this because I've actually done a whole show on this before talking about, you know, fountain pens and ballpoint pens and all the different pens that could actually bring in good money. And uh, I want to look into it again to bring you guys at least one pen that sold for really good money. If you want to learn about the best ballpoint pens that sell on eBay, type that in ballpoint pens that sell on eBay. I've got a whole live show that covers all the best brands, uh, but here's a really good one. Mont Blanc. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Three hundred thirteen dollars, three hundred thirteen bucks. I'm not going to go into the details, guys, but if you ever find pens with this brand, anything that looks like this, look it up. Really big money to be made. Uh, second to last item I want to share with you guys, just because you know when I was growing up. Speaking of of cards, 
I was big into collecting baseball cards, really, really big. And I remember every birthday that I had, my uncle, who at the time he was living in, I want to say they were living in New Jersey. They moved to Minnesota. They now live in Colorado. But every year he would send me a baseball card. You know, I remember he he sent me a Hank Aaron card once. He sent me a card, a Scrimsky card. Um, a lot of a lot of cool old players. Uh, but here's a Willie Mays card that uh, is in looks appears to be in really good condition. It looks like it was graded and all that sold for five hundred bucks. Now, I didn't I didn't show this to you to to be on the lookout for it because you'll probably never find it. And if you do. Who knows? You ain't going to find it at a thrift store. Really, the point of this was to state that, you know, most of the newer cards, baseball cards, aren't worth jack. Not worth a bunch. A bunch they're not really worth much money. And the reason is, is, you know, from my understanding, I'm not an expert. Uh, the reason is they, they, they were mass produced and there's a ton of them out there. So, I mean, even if you find like 1992, like flair, you know, never open boxes of cards. I mean, they're not worth much money. Most of the newer or, you know, anything after I'd say 80s and even the 80s, right? 80s, 90s, 2000s aren't worth much money. Again, you know, I'm not an expert, so do your do your research and diligence. But uh, if you're looking for cards, baseball cards that are worth good money, look into you know anything in the 60s, right? The 40s, 50s, 60s, the tops. So you find the top dog players, the Hank Aaron's, the Babe Ruths, the Willie Mays, you know, the Roberto Clemente's. Um, now, I don't know if you're ever going to find them, but there's actually good money to be made in some of the older cards if they're in good condition. So, uh, yeah, 1960 Willie Mays uh, tops baseball card, 500 bucks. Now, the last item I'm going to admit, I kind of was going down the rabbit hole and I don't know how I stumbled on this item, but this is a nightmare on Elm Street Freddy glove. Tell me this isn't creepy. Imagine if you were sleeping, right? You go to bed tonight. You're tired. You worked all day long, right? You worked all day long. You worked on your eBay business or Amazon business. You cleaned the house. You went on a run. I mean, you worked 10, 12 hours. You go to bed. Maybe it's you know midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning, and you hear this noise, right? You hear this. And maybe your wife wakes up, and she goes, what is that? What's that noise? And you say, I don't know. I don't know. She goes, it's coming from the hallway coming from the hallway and you hear it again so your wife convinces you to get out of the bed and it's pitch black in the house and you creep out of the bedroom and you turn around the corner and boom freddy's there waiting anyways guys um this is crazy. This is a crazy item. I don't know if it's homemade or what, but this is probably one of the creepiest items I think I've ever ever seen sold on eBay. $400. Deluxe Nightmare on Elm Street replica Freddy glove made from aged brass and copper. The stainless steel blades are mirrored finished with an edge effect, which make them seem very sharp. This is not a toy. <laughs> Again, guys. Sorry, I'm, I'm quite obnoxious during this broadcast. Hey, got to have some fun. But anyways, guys, if you hear that noise in the middle of the night, just don't get out of bed. Just don't. Nothing's good. Nothing good is going to happen. <laughs> All right, let me jump into the comment section real quick, see what's going on. All right, I'm going to answer some questions, guys. If you have any Q&A, let me know. Ask a question. I'm going to answer some questions for about five minutes, and then I'm going to have to roll out of here. Uh, Carol on sale, what's going on? Javon Johnson, what's happening? My fair treasure, Steve, how do you handle people who are looking down on you for scanning books at a garage sale? So I've talked about this before. Um, you know, looking down at you. So you're probably wondering, what do you do if you're at a garage sale? And you walk up and the people are looking at you like, what in the world is this girl doing? What is this guy doing? Why is he picking up books and pointing his phone at it? What is he doing? Is he looking to make money? Is he trying to take advantage of me? These are probably the things that you're thinking in your mind. Um, first thing you got to realize is most people at garage sales are just trying to get rid of their crap and they're worried about their own problems. They're not worried about you. Mostly when people are looking at you, they're typically looking just out of curiosity. Maybe they're trying to figure out what are you actually doing. I don't think most of the time they're worried about you making money. Uh, what do I do to combat this? Typically what I do is if I notice you know, that everyone's staring at me or everyone's looking at me. Like For example, a couple months ago I walked up to a garage sale and there was like 
a family of like 10 sitting in, sitting in all their, their lawn chairs. And in front of them were like three boxes of textbooks. And I'm like, crap, there's like, there's like 30 textbooks and they're all right in front of it. So what I did is I approached the group. I said, Hey, what's going on guys? How's your day? Beautiful day. You're smart for being in the shade, blah, 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 chit chat. And I said, Hey, um, I want to let you know that I actually sell books. I sell books and, um, I'm going to go through here and, and scan some of them to see if they're worth any money. Um, if they are, uh, I could definitely make you an offer and help take these off your hands. Uh, and they, and they typically they'll say, and in this situation, like, Oh, great, cool. Like, I didn't know you could do that. And then I'll usually say something along the lines of like, yeah, but you know, I can't promise you that I'm going to buy anything because, and I'll, I'll usually go into a rant about how the, uh, the, uh, the textbook companies and the schools, how they always make new versions. And this is all done in like 20 seconds. So I'm not sitting here for like 10 minutes talking, but I'll usually go into a rant about how like they always make new textbooks every year and a lot of them don't have value, which is true. And then they're like, oh, okay, well, we appreciate it. If you, if you could take some off our hands, we don't want to drag it back inside. So I'll just be honest. I'll typically be honest. Um, Another thing you can do is you can say, hey, I'm, I'm just looking up reviews. I'm looking up reviews. I'm looking to see if this is the textbook that that I need. But I don't like to go that route. It's I feel like it's unethical, and I feel like most of the time they know what you're doing. Um, I, I think they know that you know if you're scanning 20 books, you're not looking to see if you're taking them from every class. So hopefully that answered your question. Would you suggest Etsy as a reseller platform worth mixing with eBay and Amazon? Uh, I don't sell on, on Etsy. I've never sold on Etsy. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, but my my good buddy and partner, uh, partner in crime inside the green room, he sells on Etsy and he enjoys selling a lot of vintage items. He does really, really well. So um, if you are a green room member, over the next couple months, we're going to start putting some more videos in there about Etsy. So um, definitely check that out. But he likes it. So And I've, I've heard good things about it, but I can't can't say anything from my own experience. Hey, picking for profit. What's happening, dude? Good to see you live, man. We got to uh, connect and uh, get up on a video or something. That would be pretty cool. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away. Again, if you are enjoying this video, 13 top selling items that sold on eBay for ridiculous profits, be sure to smash that like button. Now, obviously, you can't tell you know how much money somebody made on an item. You can't tell a profit. Um, you know, from someone else's uh, sale because you don't know what they paid for it, uh, this and that. But uh, you know, I'm trying to share items that sold for really good money that would definitely have some profit left over for you if you were to find it. Uh, hey, Steve, is this video going to have a replay? So yes, this this video is open to the public. So after it's done, it'll be open for replay and it'll be here forever. So uh, feel free to go through, come through, and take notes. Tawny, Tawny Lavelle, what's going on? You cracked me up. Did you hear my little uh, story about the Freddy glove? I'm a weird guy. I admit it. What are you going to do? Uh, Jeanette, I'm going to ask my mom about those for sure. Uh, do you let people know you're a reseller when you're out scanning at garage sales at state sales if they ask what you're doing? I feel weird scanning stuff in front of people. So here's actually another person asking that question. Uh, again, if someone asks me, I'll typically admit it. When I when I was new and I was a little shy, uh, I would make up lies and little stories. You don't even want to hear what I would say, just stupid stuff. But uh, now I'll just admit it, and uh, most people are like mesmerized. They're like, wow, that's really cool. Like I always wanted to do that. So – you know, you can let them know, uh, you know, I've only had a handful of situations in my whole life dealing with thousands of people where maybe they were a little put off by you being a reseller. But most people at a garage sale, especially, they're just looking to get rid of their stuff. Now, I always say there's there's two types of people who have a garage sale. Uh, one is the person who's looking to just clear out all their stuff. They need some extra cash. You know, they don't want to take the stuff back in. They want to get rid of it. And, you know, that person's probably never going to get offended that you're a reseller. They're worried about their own situation. Uh, the second type of person, and, and this is the type of person you typically have to worry about, um, is a reseller, right? A reseller. Some resellers don't like, don't like to know that they're getting an item. They're giving away an item that's, um, that has the ability to be resold again. Um, and some resellers are very prideful. You know how it is in this community. Some people, you know. Anyways, uh, that's the person you have to worry about, the one who's looking to make money versus trying to get rid of it. Uh, but, you know, most of these 
most of these things we build up in our minds aren't even real. It's these big fantasies that never play out. So I wouldn't worry about it. Good Use Goods says, I've gotten better deals when people know I'm a reseller. All of a sudden, they're telling me about all this stuff in their basement. So there you go. Yeah, I've had a cold for like 10 days. I'm pretty much over it, but I've been having a lot of congestion. But uh, I'm going to be back and ready to roll, getting back into the gym tomorrow. So I apologize if my voice is a little off-putting. Steve... <clears throat> What advice would you give someone struggling with sales on eBay? Um, how do a person twin their items? So I don't know what that last part means, but advice for someone struggling with sales. Uh, number one, most of the time when I when I when someone reaches out to me and they're like, check out my store, I'm not making much money. The number one thing I see in people who are struggling with sales is number one, they don't have many items listed. Uh, number two, they're not consistently listing, which is big. And you might think to yourself, well, consistently listing, what's that What's that matter? Well, there's something that happens on eBay when you're consistent, when you're listing, even if it's two items a day every day versus just listing like 10 items every month. When you're consistent with your listings, it just helps to get traffic to your store, probably because your listings are always hitting the new listings and traffic they're flying into those newly listed items and then looking at other items in your store. Um, but making sure you have plenty of items in your store and plenty of items, that's all up for debate, right? If you're looking to make a hundred bucks a month, then 20 items is plenty. But if you're looking to make 2000 a month, you know, you're going to need 300 items probably at least. So do you have enough items in your store to make whatever you're looking to make? Because the reason why you sit, you think you're struggling is because you're not making what you think you should be making, but you got to realize there's a strong correlation between how many items you have listed and how much money you make, right? There's a certain percentage of sell through a sell through percentage each month, each day that you can expect. So that's going to differ based on what you're selling your feedback and all that. But do you have enough items in your store? That's your biggest thing right there. Uh, number two, are you listing consistently? And number three, are you focusing on items that are actually in demand that people want to buy? I look at people's stores and they're selling $2, $3, $4 trinkets that nobody cares about. You look it up in the sold listings, items just aren't selling. So make sure that the items that you're putting on, putting in your store have a demand and sell for a good, enough, a good, a good amount of money and that there's profit left over. Appreciate it, Tony. Yeah, good use goods. Crappy, I just got a one time of the year. Yeah, it's definitely that time of the year for sure. So uh, my IGWE, hopefully that answered your question. So Mary Beth, what's going on, Mary Beth? Good to see you. Bolo, Sandis, slot, radio cards, micro SD, MP3 player. Very cool. Paid, got one for 25 cents and uh, sold for 100. Wow. So I got Mama Profits actually sending me a text right now. How, how how are you doing? I went to Goodwill, but there wasn't anything there this morning. So if you're wondering who Mama Profits is, that's actually my mom. She is a stone cold thrift store killer. She's been killing it. She's been doing great. Um, we were actually going through her uh, sales from – she started selling on Amazon in 2014, and um, she actually – her first year, I'm not going to state her exact numbers because I don't want to put her business out there, but let's just say from her first year to her second year, she uh, she like 5X'd it. So she 5X'd it. Uh, and then her third year, she – what did she? she – I think she went up like 80%. And then this year, I think she's going to double that again. So she's been killing it. Uh, would you recommend buying new stock to flip? I mean, sure, if you could find it, you know, I've got a buddy, uh, Resale Rabbit, who is big into liquidation. So he buys out a lot of old, old dead stock returns, um, items like that. So if you could source it, if you could figure it out, whether it's through wholesale or private label or liquidation, I would, I would definitely say go for it. Definitely go for it. Eddie Willis, good to see you guys. So that's about it. I'm going to wrap things up. I've got to go downstairs. My uh, girlfriend's cooking up an amazing lunch. I think she's got some, some curry, potatoes, a bunch of good stuff. I could smell it coming up the stairs. So I'm going to go downstairs, and I'm going to get some, um, some food. Uh, one last question I'm going to answer from Tawny. Do you have any advice for a newbie to get started on eBay? Um, okay, so this is going to be the last question that I answer right here. And again, if anyone else has any questions – 
leave a comment below and I'll try to get to it after the, the replays posted. Um, advice for newbies, like I said before, uh, to get started, I mean, you're going to have to sign up for your account. So sign up for your account, get it all started, get your credit card, tax information all ready to roll and just start going out and just buying stuff. You know, you could start with, with selling things around your house. It's always a good way to get started because you have very little risk. You know, there's no, you don't have to pay any money to buy it. You already have it. So maybe start looking around your house and listing items. The key right here is you want to get things listed and sold as quick as possible when you first get started because it's going to take a good 30 to 60 days to get your selling limits um, increased to the point where you can start to really scale it. So Tawny, first thing, just start finding things around your house and listing them up and selling them listing them up and selling them because after about 30 days, I think they're going to increase your selling limits. So uh, get it listed as quick as possible. Um, do your research when you're in the stores, right? When you're thinking about buying something, look in the sold listings and find a comparable item that is sold, maybe several and price your item that way. Don't overinflate the value. If you see five of the item that's sold for 20, 40, 60, 90, don't value it at 90. I'd value it maybe on the lower end just to protect yourself in the event of you know, the item not going for as much as you'd like. Because remember, you're going to have very little feedback. There's not going to be a ton of buyer confidence there. So don't expect to get the same value that an item sold for with a seller who's been selling for 10 years and has 2,000 feedback. It's probably not going to happen. So uh, buy cheap. You know, start with garage sales. Start with thrift stores. Start with selling things around your house and minimize the risk as much as possible. But just get started um, and, you know, take it slow and, and list consistently. That's key. You know, buy items that are in demand. That's key. And just keep pushing forward. So anyways, guys, appreciate you guys watching live. If you did find some value in this video, do me a big favor and smash that like button. Definitely would appreciate that. I'm watching right now. I'm looking. It's, it's only 53 likes. Let's see. Who's got some love right now? I want to see that like button go up right now. I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving till you smash it. <laughs> Pick it for profit says yummy. I know I'm hungry. Oh, somebody hit the like button. I appreciate that. Roots Radical 808. Thanks, Steve. Love all your advice. Got my first month selling on eBay under my belt. So there you go. Make sure you call eBay Roots Radical. Get your selling limits increased. That's really important. Oh, look at everybody smashing that like button. I appreciate it. Uh, but anyways, guys, we've got some live shows coming up on the Rake and Profit YouTube channel the next week. We've got a live show going down tomorrow. Oh, sorry. I'm all stuffed up. Live show going down tomorrow at noon. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to start an Amazon FBA business. So I've got a whole outline all set up for you guys. We're going to be going through. So sorry, guys. Um, if you want to get started selling on Amazon, maybe you're selling on eBay, but you don't know where to start. I'm going to walk through all the steps. So it's going to be a really nice um, video for kind of building up you know, a beginner's foundation. So that's going to be going on tomorrow at noon. Uh, let's see. Um, Tuesday, I'm not sure. Wednesday, we, we're going to have a green room show on the Bonafide Hustlers YouTube channel. Not sure what the topic's going to be. Thursday, I've got a live show on my channel at 9 p.m. Eastern time talking about um, transitioning from part-time to full-time selling on eBay with Ronnie over at Hearts Motor Company, Hearts Pickers. Uh, so that's going on Thursday. Also tomorrow, if you are on the green room email list, we've got a webinar that's going to be going on. Make your first thousand dollars and beyond. So if you're brand new and you're trying to figure out how do I get started on eBay? How do I get started on Amazon? We've got that show. It is a private show. So the only way you're going to get notified because this isn't going to come up on your feed is to be on the green room email list. How do you get on the email list? Download the book below. Go in the description. It's the first line. It says free book, 100 amazing items to resell. It's right here. Free book, 100 amazing items to resell. Uh, click on that. Let me make sure that it's still here. So if you click on, let me see. Okay. Yeah, so if you click on it, you're going to get here. Hit send me the free book. Put in your email. You'll get this free book sent to you. Again, that's 100 amazing items that you can resell uh, for ridiculous profits. You'll get put on our email list, which, again, we'll send you an email a couple times a week with tips about eBay, Amazon, a whole bunch of cool stuff, videos. 
and uh, we'll send you a notification of that webinar that's going on tomorrow, how to make your first $1,000 and uh, beyond. So definitely be sure to uh, check that out. But anyways, guys, that's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me go back. Okay, let me leave that. Okay, cool. So that's about it, guys. Appreciate all the love. I will talk to you soon. Smash that like button. Until next time, have a great day. Keep on picking and making that money, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.